Hi there, I am Sarah Weber, the Florida Friendly Landscaping Education and Training Specialist here in Charlotte County, Florida. Today we are going to talk about the first principle of Florida Friendly Landscaping, right plant, right place. Before we get started, for those of you not familiar with University of Florida IFAS Extension, um, Extension is a partnership between state, federal, and county governments to provide unbiased scientific research-based knowledge and expertise to the public. The University of Florida, together with Florida A&M University, administers the Florida Cooperative Extension Service. Here in Charlotte County, we have the course the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. We have Sea Grant 4-H, which is all the youth programming. We have a family nutrition program and the Florida Master Gardener Program. So what is Florida Friendly Landscaping? It's an integrated approach to maintaining a attractive, colorful, diverse yard. It's less work than the traditional landscape. It's friendly to wildlife and environmentally responsible management. The goals are to conserve water, to protect water quality, and protect our natural resources. Recognizing the home landscape as part of a larger natural system will help you make sound decisions in creating a Florida-friendly yard. The mission of the Florida-friendly landscaping program is to educate Floridians um, about science-based science and environmentally friendly landscaping practices and to encourage them to conserve and protect our water resources by applying Florida friendly landscaping principles in their landscapes. There's nine principles altogether. Of course, today we're talking about the first one, right plant, right place. But the rest of those nine principles are water efficiently, fertilizing appropriately, mulching, attracting wildlife, managing yard pests responsibly, recycling, reducing stormwater runoff, and protecting the waterfront. So plants selected for a specific site are going to require minimal amounts of water, fertilizer, pesticides, and maintenance. Thorough planning will help you place plants where its needs and yours are met. Many of the plants used in Florida can vary widely in the requirements. So if you can choose plants that are suited to their particular environment, um, that is much better. Selecting the right plant, right place, considers the moisture, light, soil, uh, temperature, and other characteristics of the planting site. Careful planning and site evaluation are the first steps in applying this concept. Plants uh, vary considerably in their ability to tolerate different site conditions, and it's critical to select plants to match the existing growing conditions of the site. Even the best planting practices will not help a plant thrive if it's poorly suited for a particular site. Plants established in the right location have greater resistance to pests, uh, environmental stresses, such as uh, drought and shade. Ornamental grasses shown here thrive in the hot, dry conditions next to the asphalt parking lot. Plants that tolerate wet conditions are located in the low-lying area, uh, the image there on the right. So keys to success, proper planning and plant selection. This will avoid problems later. It will save you energy, money, water, effort, time, it will make the landscape more enjoyable and it ensures the plant's needs and your expectations are met. Plan first, plant once. This is a process. It's not a one-time event. It's not something you'll get done in one day. Um, know the plants and thrive, or excuse me, know the plants and the conditions required to thrive. You can always consult with our office. Um, you can utilize edis.ifis.ufl.edu. It's a great resource. You can go on there and type just about any landscaping or plant subject in there, and it will give you that factual research-based information. 
and uh, utilize regional gardening books and magazines. Keep in mind, uh, it's a whole different world down here than uh, planting a garden or a yard or landscape uh, up north. Okay, analyzing the site. So what do you already have and how can you use it? Determine what you want to keep or change in your landscape. Ask yourself, what do you have? What do you want to do with it? What are the best places for entries and walkways? Where do you want to frame views or establish privacy? And where in your yard is the full sun, partial sun, or shade? And what's the soil type? Is it sand, clay, silt, pH? Uh, what's the pH level? Well drained or is it poorly drained? Consider the orientation of your home. Uh, use the FFL guide to plant selection and landscape design to guide plant choices. This is a wonderful resource and it is available online. Uh, you can also pick it up at your local extension office. Um, it gives you different design options for your landscape and also uh, the rest of the book is full of different plants, the ones that are native and Florida friendly and good to plant in our area. It will also tell you its water and light requirements. Um, and if it's wildlife friendly and so forth. So you also want to choose plants that are recommended for your zone, which if you are in Charlotte County here, uh, Charlotte County is a, uh, 10A in the coastal areas and 9B inland. This is the plant hardiness uh, zone map by USDA. Okay, determine your needs and wants. How do you use, you currently use the property and how do you want to use the property? Keep, uh, take into consideration your family activities, uh, pets, if you need a space for them, outdoor entertainment, storage, if you're gonna put a vegetable garden in or if you already have one. Uh, and be sure to check with your HOA if you have one, um, the city and county for landscaping code specifications and restrictions before you begin as well. Level of maintenance. This doesn't look like much here, but this is really, these are both high maintenance areas to maintain. Uh, long strips of grass are a pain to mow. Um, this would be much easier if the grass was gone and mulch were put in with Florida friendly and native plants there. Design considerations. Think about the eventual size and other factors. The one gallon plant that you buy at the store may be, might look perfect for a specific space, but it may grow much, much bigger than that one gallon pot size. So consider the mature height, the mature spread, how fast does it grow, the shape of the plant, the salt tolerance, the sh uh, shade, sun, level, pH, is it susceptible to pests? And is it native or non-native? And put together a landscape plan. Arrange your activity areas. Draw where you want the trees, the shrubs, the ground covers, or flowering plants, and group plants according to their needs. When you're doing this, you don't have to worry about the specific plant ID, um, but arrange those activity areas. If you want a butterfly garden or if you want a play area, your vegetable garden, where you want lawn, create and define those spaces. And please buy healthy plants. Look for new growth. Um, roots should be white and fibrous. Avoid pot bound plants and avoid diseased or insect infested insect infested plants. So don't buy an unhealthy plant from the store and bring it home um, that can create problems in the long run. And a great first step for anyone's yard is to remove any invasive plants that you may have in your yard. And of course, do not plant to any invasive plants. If you go to this website here, uh, the assessment.ifis.ufl.edu, it will give you uh, all, the inf uh, all the information on the invasive plants in our zone.
These are some common invasive plants that we often see in Florida yards. These are most of the, these are so common. The top left is Mexican petunia. Um, the top right there is multicolored lantana. Now there is a native lantana, which is um, called pine, uh, pineland lantana. And it's, it is a lot, it's harder to find. It's usually not at your big box stores, but a lot of the native nurseries do sell it. So that's a great replacement for that uh, uh, invasive lantana. And the orchid tree down there at the left and then oyster plant bottom right. So if you have any of these in your yard and you're able to remove them, that would be a really good first step. There are a lot of great native uh, plants that you can replace them with. Trees in the landscape. Trees provide a framework for the rest of the landscape. They can add color and texture, provide shade, it can increase your property value, they attract wildlife, and they can actually reduce your energy costs if they're properly planted near your buildings. Selecting the right place for a tree. Once again, know the mature size. Provide adequate space. Trees should be planted at least 15 feet from the foundation of a home. Uh, avoid overhead power lines. And remember that tree roots grow out, not down. 80 to 90% of a tree root system is actually found in the upper 18 to 24 inches of the soil. Roots of trees and shrubs grow to about three times the branch spread. Tree installation. Proper planting and establishing of trees balances air and moisture in the soil. The most common causes of poor plant establishment are planting too deeply, underwatering, overwatering, and over mulching. Avoid fertilizing a tree until it's established and utilize proper irrigation. Shrubs in the landscape. Shrubs are woody plants, usually with multiple trunks and branches. They can provide structure, texture, and color to a landscape. And many can be pruned to form hedges and topiary figures, or they can be left natural as well. <clears throat> Try to keep it simple. Plant in large groups and group, once again, group according to water and maintenance needs um, and space according to mature size. Shrubs should be two and a half feet at least away from the house to the center of the root, uh, root ball. Mulching. There are many benefits of mulching. Uh, it improves the soil fertility through decomposition, buffers soil temperature, minimizes water needs, inhibits weed growth, <clears throat> improves soil structure, aeration and drainage, and it does complement the plantings as well. You wanna make sure you expose the trunk flare, which is this part right here, the bottom of the tree. Avoid voc uh, volcano mulching. <coughs> okay, avoid volcano mulching, um, which is this right here. We wanna pull First of all, not have it this thick. Certainly, um, this will promote uh, insects. It will promote uh, rotting of the tree down at the bottom there. And plus, the water will not be able to get down into the roots this way. So right plant, right place. This is a good example of wrong place. Um, this tree here too close to the curb and the sidewalk, it's gonna end up having um, size issues and root issues <clears throat> in that lawn right there, the grass or the turf right there is very difficult to maintain, especially on that uh, steep slope. Uh, I think we talked about this narrow strips of grass, they are difficult to maintain. We'll stay away from those if possible. 
here's a little before picture. It's not too bad, but uh, it's a little bland and um, it's nice to be able to turn it into something like this. This is easier to maintain, no mowing, a lot of native plants in there, friendlier to wildlife. There's another before and after. Uh, this has no mowing as well, which is a big bonus. Looks like there's butterfly garden in there. And it looks a lot more useful, peaceful in some place you would like to be. So if you compare landscape, landscape one with a quarter acre and the entire quarter acre is covered in lawn or landscape two, which is also a quarter acre and only one sixteenth is covered in lawn. The rest of the area is lower maintenance plants. Landscape one has four times the energy costs as landscape two. Your yard is an important part of the protection and preservation of Florida's environment. The decisions we make about our landscapes have a profound impact on water quality. With a little thought, our landscapes can combine beauty, function, and environmental protection. These are the great resources online. To the left here is the Florida uh, Yards and Neighborhoods Handbook. In the middle is that book we were talking about earlier, the Florida Friendly Landscaping Guide to Plant Selection and Landscape Design. And then we have the Florida Friendly Best Management Practices for Protection of Water Resource uh, by the Green Industries. These are all available online once again, and most of the time these are available at your local extension office if you'd like a hard copy. And they are free and they are wonderful resources to have on hand, especially this middle one here with all the different plants. Um, it shows you the picture, the light and water requirements. Um, it promotes native plants and there are some non-natives in there that are Florida friendly as well. If you have any questions at all, um, please feel free to give me an email. There's my email address right there and if you are interested in more you can like us on facebook um, you can go to our charlotte county ufifis website or the ffl homepage.